Hey everybody, it's Paul from One Cast One Fish, and welcome back to our series on the Garmin Striker Fish Finder. Now, link below in the description are the previous classes in the series, so be sure to check them out so you're up to speed as we dive into this next class. So here we are, class number 10. We're going to be going over the flasher feature of the Garmin Striker Fish Finder. Now, the flasher is an old school feature that has a ton of relevance today, especially for those who know how to tap into its strengths. In this video, we're going to look at the adjustable menu options for the flasher, and then we're going to look at real examples from the flasher to help us understand and read the screen. Now before we begin, be sure if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on bell notifications so you get notified of the next One Cast One Fish video. From the home screen, select flasher. Now we'll look at some of our menu options for the flasher. So press the menu key. You'll see we have some options that should look familiar from earlier classes in the series. Range, gain, frequency, overlay number, and sonar setup. Let's select range. Here you can select the depth range for your sonar screen. For me, if I'm moving while fishing, like from a boat or a kayak, I tend to leave my range in auto. However, if you're stationary, such as ice fishing, you may want to set it just over the max depth of the hole you're fishing. Now let's go back, scroll down, and select gain. Again, we went over the gain in depth in class number 5, which is linked down below in the description, so I won't spend a lot of time with details here. Let's go back, scroll down, and select frequency. With the flasher, you have the use of the standard 77 or 200 kHz frequencies, along with the option to choose the 77 or 200 kHz chirp frequencies. I tend to like the chirp 77 kHz for the majority of my fishing, including ice fishing. However, depending on water depth and your application, the 200 kHz option can be very useful. Now let's go back and now we'll select overlay numbers. Here you can adjust and turn on or off some of your optional number overlays. Number overlays were talked about in depth in class number four. For the flasher, the most useful overlay to adjust will be editing our layout. So scroll down and select edit layout. Here you can adjust your readouts on the top of your flasher screen. For me, when using the flasher, I like to keep it simple with water depth, water temperature, and device voltage, as these are what's most important to me. Now let's go back and scroll down and select sonar setup. Here's where you can make adjustments to various aspects of your flasher sonar. Let's start with scroll speed. Generally, I like to keep scroll speed around slow or medium. However, for vertical jigging or ice fishing, Garmin actually recommends the use of ultra scroll, which is the fastest setting. And if you're interested in seeing more on the scroll settings, be sure to check out class number four, which I've also linked to down in the description for an in-depth discussion. Let's go back, scroll down, and select appearance. This is where you can change the sonar color scheme. Let's select yellow as a demonstration. Now, for me personally, when using the flasher, I actually prefer the classic blue as it has better color separation in my opinion. Now, let's go back, scroll down, and select noise reject. Here you can adjust your noise rejection settings such as interference, surface noise, and TVG. Again, all these settings were covered in depth in class number four. Now it's time to look at a few examples and learn the basics of how to read the flasher. Let's start with the fundamentals. The flasher circle is meant to represent the entire water column, from the surface to the bottom. And the best part about the flasher is you're actually seeing the water column within the transducer cone in real time. Here, starting at zero, we're at the surface. And as we move around clockwise, we see the larger blue area. This is the water column. And as we continue clockwise, we'll see a large red area here. This is the bottom at around 30 feet. The actual bottom depth is displayed at the center of the flasher screen. And if you look, there's depth markers for reference that'll be shown around the inner flasher circle. Here we can see that our water depth is about 35 feet. And looking into the water column, we can see what likely is a fish about 15 feet. Now let's look at another example. In this next example, we see fish at what appears to be about 8 feet and 30 feet. Now that we have a basic understanding of the flasher screen, let's take a look at an example in motion. In this next clip, we're going to see our bait, and then a fish will appear in our sonar cone near our bait. Now we're going to see a really cool scene unfold. We're going to see our bait, 
Then we're going to see a fish attack our bait. Then you're going to see a solid hookup in fighting that fish. That's a wrap for class number 10 of the flasher feature. The flasher is a really cool tool, especially once you learn the basics and fundamentals of how to use it properly. I really hope you've enjoyed this class and learned a few new things. As always, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on the water.